What's up, Victory Youth? So glad you're worshiping with us together. Listen, wipe that sleep out your face and get up. Let's praise the Lord together. My name is Trey. Grab your friends, grab your family, and help us worship the name of our Lord today. Yeah! We love to call your name. It's something. the series talking about the lost sheep and if you remember there was a shepherd who had a hundred sheep and one went astray and he left the 99 in the field to go find the one and when he found it that he threw a whole party whole celebration it was a turnip just for this one sheep and Jesus goes on to tell the parable and he continues with the story about a woman who had 10 silver coins and she lost one 
And it talks about how she, she turned on the light, she flipped the couch cushions, if they had couches. She looked all over the house for this one coin. Now listen, it wasn't a silver coin like we think of, not a nickel, not a dime. It was worth a day's worth of work. So it was actually worth a good portion of money, especially if you're already struggling. And But the thing is that this coin didn't even know it was lost. They didn't know how much it was worth, but the person who owned it did. And it was so important to her to find it that when she found it, just like they threw a party for the one lost sheep, she called all her neighbors, all her friends to throw a party for the one lost coin that she found. And Jesus says again, this is what it's gonna be like in heaven. When just one person returns to the Father, there will be a whole turn up because that one person matters so much. So Jesus continues on and he talks about the story of, of the lost son. So we have the lost sheep, the lost coin, and Jesus wraps up this parable talking about the lost son. And let's watch a quick recap of that story together. Social club. But they don't get it. And so he tells them a famous parable that goes like this. There was a father who had two sons. The older son is trustworthy and honors his father. And the younger son, he's a mess. <laughs> he rebels and cashes in his inheritance to travel far away and blow it all on partying and being stupid. And then there's a famine in the land and he runs out of money. So he has to scrape by by taking care of somebody's pigs. And he's so hungry he wants to eat the pig slop, at which point it occurs to him, if I'm gonna be a farmhand, I might as well go home and work for my dad. At least I won't be eating pig food. So he treks back home, rehearsing his apology. Now, the father is certain that his son did not survive the famine. But then, one day, he sees someone walking down the road. It's his son. He's not dead. And so the father runs to him and embraces his son, kissing him all over. The son starts his speech. Dad, I don't deserve to be your son. Maybe I could come and work for you. But before he can finish, the father calls his servants to go get the nicest robe, new sandals, a fancy ring for his son. They are to prepare the best food for a banquet. It is time to celebrate. Now later that day, the older brother arrives from a long day working in the field to discover his long lost loser of a brother has come home and they're celebrating. And he gets angry. And think about it. He's been faithful to his father all of these years. He never got a party like this. And and then this disgrace of a family member comes home and they're going to celebrate him? It's disgusting. He refuses to join the banquet. So the father finds the older brother outside and he says, Son, you are already in our family. Everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate your brother because he was lost. And now he's found. He was dead. But now he's alive. Jesus wants the religious leaders to see the outsiders the way God sees them, as sons and daughters that are being reclaimed from death. Jesus' kingdom community was wide open to anybody. The only entry requirement is to humble yourself and recognize your need for God's mercy. And so what I love so much about this story is it, it highlights the nature of who we are. We are people who go after the best, who go after what we want. We follow our desires. And the crazy part is that we believe in a God who gives us free will. He lets us. He gives us the option to choose him or not choose him. And so in the story, we see this son who goes, he chooses to take his inheritance, to, to take his portion of the estate, which typically you wouldn't get until after your father died. So that was a slap in the face. He said basically like, I want my money now. It's better that it'd be cool if you were dead now and I could just take my money. So the father gives him his portion and he goes, he wasted all on parties, on who knows what and then he comes to his senses when he realizes that all he really has to eat is pig slop and he realizes that man maybe i did have it good maybe it's just best for me to go home it's better to be a servant at my father's house than to be where i am now and so he goes home as we saw and not only does the father welcome him with open arms but what we see it says that when the son was afar off the father could see him. It says that when the son was afar off, the father saw him. That means 
possibly that the father was waiting for him the whole time that maybe every day he woke up and he said you know what maybe today's the day that my son will come home and so he stood outside and he looked for him and that day he saw the son from afar off and the father ran to him he didn't even wait for the son to come he ran to him and he welcomed him, he loved him, he kissed him. And, and the son tried to explain like, I'll just be a servant. And the father said, no, you are my son. And then he threw a party because again, you and I and everybody is worth being loved. It's worth the father's love. And so that even when one of us just comes and says, God, forgive me, here I am. It's a whole party because we matter so much to God. And maybe you're thinking of this story and you see how you've made some mistakes. You've chosen other things over God. Maybe you've chosen boys over God or girls or or whatever. Maybe you've chosen some other things over God and you're saying, you know what? I realize that none of that really matters right now. In the bigger picture, none of it matters. And what I need to do is return to God and say, Lord, forgive me, and here I am, and I receive your love as a son, as a daughter of God. And guess what? He is willing and ready to receive you, and not only you, but anybody who chooses to turn to him. And maybe you have some friends or some family members that you realize need to know that they are so loved by God and that that there's nothing that they could ever do. There's nothing that they could ever choose that would separate them from the love of God. In Romans, it says that there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And so we get to not only be um, beneficiaries of that meaning that we we don't only get to be recipients of that but we get to share that love and that truth with other people and that's what god calls us to do is to share his love with others and to let them know that they're always welcome to him with open arms and so i want us to pray together today god we thank you for your love we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your son jesus um, and his sacrifice god we thank you that you're always um, open to receiving us when we make mistakes, when we choose other things over you, God, we thank you that we can always come back to you um, because you love us so much. Would you remind us daily of this love that you have for us, that there's nothing that we can ever do that would separate us from your love? And would you give us the courage to share this truth with others? And we pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Victory Youth. We love you, and more importantly, God loves you. If you have any prayer requests, we want you to DM us. We want you to email us, cym at bbcpasadena.org. DM us on Instagram. Let us know how we can be praying for you and supporting you this summer. Congratulations to all of our graduates. We hope to see you at the Grad Recognition drive through Celebration on June 26th at 6.30 p.m. in the church parking lot. And... Also, we want to see you tonight. Yes, tonight for Sunday Night Live. Hop on Zoom. The link will be in our bio on YouTube. See you guys in a little bit. Have a great week. Peace.